So over to you, John. You can continue with the hands-on session. Okay. Okay, ma'am. So uh, everyone, I'll be pasting the link to the spoken tutorial for creating the 3D geometry, uh, 3D mesh geometry. So what we'll be doing is we'll be following. I think it is tutorial number six, seven, and eight. I have just shared the link. So first one is the spoken tutorial link. Second one is the YouTube link. If the video is not working, watch the YouTube link. But for all the uh, material that you will need. Like uh, case files and everything, you will have to use this link, the spoken tutorial link. Okay, so we have to do tutorial six, seven, and eight today. So in that, what we will be covering is first how to mesh the geometry, that is how to mesh the pipe geometry. Second thing will be how to set up the case, and third thing will be how to visualize. As Sir had said, what are the different visualization techniques that we have? A simple, a simple overview of that will be done in these three tutorials. So uh, y'all can go ahead and start. I myself will also be showcasing, or I will be showing how how it is done. So those who are familiar with uh, uh, with Open Foam a little bit, y'all can go ahead and start with the tutorial. You don't need to you know wait for me to do it, and you can go ahead and do. So do tutorial six, seven, and eight. Okay, I'll share my screen. Yeah. So first thing that you need to do is first start your Ubuntu terminal. Right. So go to start and uh, go to search and start your Ubuntu terminal. Wait for it; it will load. Now to go to your run directory, you need to type run. You can either type cd dollar foam run or you can type small run. A small run is a shortcut to go to that. So you type small run and press enter. It goes to your run directory. Now what we are doing is we are copying the tutorial case cavity into the current folder. So to do that, today I will be showing you all terminal base because I think uh, <clears throat> you have understood now where the file structure is. So we can quickly to quickly copy we will do cp. So we have shared a list of commands also with you yesterday. So you should be able to understand now. So cp minus r means I am trying to copy a folder from my Home tutorials. And inside home tutorials, it is in the incompressible folder. So incompressible. And in the ICO home folder. And inside that cavity. And inside that there is one more cavity folder. So this you have to copy. So this is the path. So what I've written, this is the path to where the uh, uh, test case is. Right? After that, I need to copy it to the current directory. If I just do dot, it will copy the cavity folder as it is. But I'm going to write pipe over here. That means it is going to copy uh, cavity and it will be named as pipe for me. Okay. So remember, there's a space after cavity and pipe. So this is my destination. So once I do that, I see it is copied. Now if I do ls, I should have a pipe. If you see over here, I have a pipe case already. So it has copied the cavity into the pipe case. Now I need to go to that specific folder. Okay. So I will do cd pipe. Okay. Now in this, if I see, I have zero. I have constant and I have system. Now, as I have shared yesterday, if we are trying to do the block mesh, am I audible? Huh. Okay. If I'm if we are trying to do the block mesh, hmm, then we we will be changing certain things, right? We'll be renaming the patches, walls, and the boundary conditions we have not yet defined. So, at present, we do not need the zero folder. So what we'll be doing is we'll be renaming it. To rename, I'll type the command mv. I'll rename zero to zero dot org. So this command will rename zero folder to zero dot org. Now if I see this, my zero folder is renamed to zero dot org. So even if I have not defined anything in the zero folder, it will not create any problem while I am missing. Now I need to edit the block mesh dict. So I will open it in gedit. So gedit 
and my block mesh dict is in the system folder. Okay, so from I have to give the path to the file. So I'll give system and then the name of the file that is block mesh dict. So it opens uh, G, uh, block mesh dict in my G edit. Now, if you see, this is the cavity case. Now, one thing is you can start writing all of those blocks, you know, how it is defined, but to save time, we have already given all those things in your, this, in the case files. So you have to go to the spoken tutorials where we have written, right? The link that I've shared to you, go over there and in the code files, in the code file section, if you see, there is a text file in which the block mesh dict is given. So if you click on it, that text file will open. Now go to where it has opened, open that in the folder. Okay, so this is that file, extract it. Once you extract it, open it, you see there will be a text file. If I open the text file, it has the whole block mesh dict written for you. So copy the whole thing. Okay, I'll wait for a while so that everybody is up to pace. Now, this is my G edit. I have copied the contents. I'll paste it over here. So if you if you see in my uh, in the text file, uh, we have the contents all the way from convert to meters. So we have copied from convert to meters to everything else. So here from convert to meters. That is in my block mesh dict file from convert to meters all the way up to the final line. I don't need all these entries. So I'll be deleting them. And I will paste the new text that has been copied. Okay. So uh, now I'll wait for a while. You all try to do this. If you have any error, you can write in the chat. Our team is there. They will guide you. If it is a simple error, I can also tell you quickly. So now you will have all those vert vertices, blocks, edges, and all the boundaries defined, like inlet, outlet, and walls defined. I hope everybody is able to do till here. Okay. After this, what you need to do is save this file. So how to Hello? get this pipe file? How to go to the pipe file? How to go to pipe file? Okay. So if you see. What we have done, first step is we went to a run directory, right? In that, I have copied the case called as cavity. And while copying, I have renamed it to pipe. So pipe is nothing but cavity that is copied from the tutorial case to pipe. So that is where your pipe is. And if you check after I do that, if I run the command ls, there is a pipe that has come into my run directory. And that is nothing but a copy of cavity. And in that we have done certain things, right? In that we have gone and renamed the zero folder to zero dot org, and now we are editing the block mesh dict. To edit the block mesh dict, you need to you need to get the new block mesh dict file. So that we have given to you in the code uh, code file section on our website over here, spoken tutorial website. The link that I have shared to you. If you scroll down, there is a section called as code files. There there is a pipe dot txt file. If you click on it. It will download it. You need to extract it. And once you do that, copy the contents of the pipe and paste it into your block mesh dict after deleting the old contents from, uh, I think, line 15 or 16. Don't delete the top headers, uh, whatever this is written, like object and everything. So this is this is needed. This is a file structure. So please don't delete that. You have to delete right from convert to meters all the way up to the last line and then place paste the new text after this is done press press save and then close this block mesh dict file now our block mesh dict is ready now we can just directly do the <coughs> block mesh command so we are in the pipe i can run the block mesh command hello john sir yes uh, sir, I followed all the instructions given in the spoken tutorial, yeah. but uh, as I type the gedit uh, command, uh, okay. the file is not opening. It might have opened in the background. Just see, 
Oh, sorry. I mean, uh, the file is opening, but it is uh, blank. It is blank. So you might yes. have not given the correct path. Please just check if the path is correct. Sometimes, if you don't give the correct path, this happens. Okay. While 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 doing that gedit command, right? Make sure you are giving the first see in which folder you are in. Either you are in five or you are in your run directory where you are. Uh, I am in my run directory. Ah, huh, then you have to go to uh, and what is the uh, this command that you have given? Uh, gedit space system slash block mesh dot. Ah, huh. see, because you are in a run directory. In the run directory, you are telling it to search for system and block mesh dot. Oh. Okay. You need to be in your pipe directory. So in run, first do cd pipe. Type this command cd space pipe. Okay, it yes. will take you to pipe and then run that gedit right. command. Did you understand what you are trying to do? You are yes, trying to ask it to search for system folder in the run directory, which is yes, sir. It worked. Uh, it worked. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. Yeah. So I I hope everybody is able to do till here. Our team will help you. So now what we are seeing is the mesh is done, and we have created some three patches with uh, some number of cells and points. So three patches that are created are inlet, outlet, and wall. So if people are still stuck, I will tell you what what I have done again. I opened my Ubuntu terminal, then I typed run. When I type run, it takes me to my run folder that is run directory. Alternative to this is you can type cd dollar foam run cd space dollar slash foam run sorry cd space dollar foam run that is also a command that takes you to the run directory. This is a shortcut. You just type r u n, it takes you to the run directory. Then you have to copy the cavity case into your run directory. But while copying, uh, while copying, you have to rename it as pipe. So the command is cp minus r. This is the location for your uh, tutorial case, and this is the new file name that is pipe. So it copies the contents of cavity into the folder name pipe. After doing that, if I do ls, it shows in my run directory I have a folder name pipe. That means I have successfully copied it. Then I enter into that folder by typing cd pipe. Now, if I see inside that folder to see the contents, I'll do ls. It will list the contents. So I have zero constant and system folder. As I previously stated, if you have not, uh, when we are only doing the block mesh, we have not yet decided on the boundary conditions, the patches, anything. So zero folder is not needed. And if we keep it, the para view may give us a problem. So what we do is we first rename the folder zero to zero dot org by typing the command mv name of the file and the new name of the file. So I am renaming zero to zero dot org by this command. Now if I do ls, you see zero constant and system has changed to zero dot org constant and system. After that, we are now ready to edit the block mesh dict file. So we open the block mesh dict file using the gedit uh, text editor. So some somebody had a problem. So they were in the run directory. So if you are in the run directory, then in gedit you have to type first pipe, then forward slash, then system, then block music. So you are giving a uh, or the other thing is go into the pipe directory by doing cd pipe and then typing this command. After after doing that, I have what I have done is in my block music, whatever was the old vertices, right? I have deleted those old data right from convert to meters all the way up to the final line. Then I have downloaded the pipe, this text file from our spoken tutorial website in the code file section. This is this, this is it. Okay. Then after downloading that, I have extracted it, copied its contents, and pasted it into our block mesh dict file. After doing that, I have saved that block mesh dict file and then I have just run the command block mesh. So it meshes the file. So you need to be ready with this to do the next steps. So I hope everybody has done this. If you have any query, you can post in the chat. Our team will help you. So just so that to, so to view the mesh that we have done it correctly, we can do paraform. So after block mesh is done, I'm doing the, I'm, doing, I'm running the paraform command. Now if I click on apply, You see my geometry is there, okay. 
I, if I want to see the mesh, I will in my over here in my controls over here instead of surface, I will select surface with edges. So this is our mesh. Sorry, I'm doing too much. Okay, and this is our mesh in the y direction. Oh, sorry, z direction. So our mesh is ready. I hope everybody has done till here. We are getting that. So we have different patches. If you see over here, we have an inlet patch, an internal mesh, outlet patch, and a patch name wall. I can uncheck that, maybe show you just inlet. So that is my inlet. Outlet. Inlet patch, outlet patch, and the patch name wall. So this is a geometry. I hope everybody has done till here. This was the first tutorial, part one, where we are running the block mesh. So, what is the status? Hello. Yes. Uh, sir, how can we change the appearance of uh, the geometry, like with the color, like inlet, outlet, and the uh, wall color? Okay, so here by default, inlet, outlet, and walls are taking different colors. You see, by this block, VTK block. Okay, so here by default, they are taking different colors. If you have to color them differently, I think you will have to explore this. I have not explored that to see how to color them differently. I think here yeah, there is some edit features, VTK block colors edit. So you can you can go over there and maybe edit specific blocks if that is your requirement. Okay, but here if you see right now, we have different colors for different blocks. So my inlet, outlet, and my walls, they are all already colored in a different scheme. So that scheme will already be there. They will be colored differently. So you have a red color, green color, and a white color. Okay, is everybody able to do till here? Yes, uh, sir. Done. Explain this uh, one uh, slightly. Uh, part of you part. I mean, exactly. I am not able to understand I mean, how you are ending that one. Can you after opening mm -hmm. the part of you? Yeah. So no, you don't have to do anything. What I am I am doing is I am just showing you the mesh. Okay. So once you open part of you, if you want to see the mesh, oh, you have to. Okay, I'll do that again. So now I am in the terminal. I am just typing a paraform command. That opens the para view. Now, if I apply, I will get the geometry. So this is my geometry, okay? Where I have an inlet, I have an outlet, and I have the walls. Now, if you see, I'm just rotating it by pressing and uh, pressing my left arrow and moving. If I want to see the mesh, I'm selecting. Yeah, let me bring it down so that it is visible. I am selecting surface with edges. So if I once I do that, along with surface, it also shows edges. That is how the mesh will look, look like. This is some some glitch in the view. Okay, I can do. Why the colors with different it white and this? Uh, uh, so see, it should come like this. That is some glitch. I think uh, in the view it is coming. So you see, it will all it will all red now. Okay. Now the red is one color. So inlet may be red, outlet. So all the different patches that you have, they will be colored differently to identify them. <clears throat> okay, and there is no particular color scheme that inlet is this, so that is not there. So now, see, we have this. This is our this is our mesh. Uh, from I can here, click we on... cannot know that block. Uh, we have five uh, blocks, meaning block one, block two. Okay, you can, you see. can you can have you can see that to do that. I will close this while. While starting paraform, you have to mention paraform and then dash block. So this is the command. So it opens paraform and it you are you will be able to view the blocks. So if you see over here, block 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 has come on the left selection. If I click apply, it will show the blocks. And with the numbering. So you have block 0, block 1, block 2, block 3, and block 4. Now if you want, I will uncheck everything and check only block 0. So this is your zeroth block. 
Okay. If I check one, this is my first block. Similarly, block number two, block number three, and block number four. If you want block, uh, what are the different blocks? You can uh, access them by typing in uh, while starting Paraform. You have to give one more keyword dash block. So it shows this view where you know what are the different blocks. So if you have made some mistake and it is not showing properly, then you can do this view to see where you have made a mistake while defining some points or something. Okay. Hello. Yes. Hello. Sir, yes. if a paraform command is not working, I am using explorer.exe uh, dot command. So uh, how can I no, use this so command? First, so first you need to, uh, oh, okay. You have to do uh, result.form, right? Yes, sir. Okay, this yeah, this have you explored? No, yes, is okay, block block. How will you block? Uh, then I think uh, block is kind of difficult with that. Okay. Mm, okay. Because okay, uh, this with this what happens is it directly opens Paraview with the block. Okay, sir. Uh, we'll have to explore that. I don't know. We have not tried that. Mm -hmm. Okay. No problem. Mm. Generally, but if you do run this command paraform dash block, it opens with the block. This generally you don't need only if you're facing some problem, you know, your blocks are not coming out correctly. You want to know if I have, you have not given some points, then maybe this can be used. But other than that, in fact, that can also be seen in your normal paraform also, if there is some error in the points. So I hope everybody has done till here. So now once we do this, then we need to switch over to our next tutorial. I'll share the details of the next tutorial. Just give me one moment. We are not solving this one. Yeah, yeah. we will be solving this only. But see, in spoken tutorials, what we do, we create tutorials in parts so that people can watch them. If, if the tutorial is too lengthy, then if somebody has a bandwidth problem, you know, all those things. So keeping all those things in mind, this tutorial is split oh, into okay. three parts. Okay. One is only about meshing, where we talk in detail about meshing. So if you would have seen that video, They'll explain what are the different blocks and everything, which Sarah has already explained. So I don't, I don't think so. We need to go through that. Then the next is the case setup that we will be seeing now. So the case setup and running is what we will be doing. Once we do that, okay. then the next next part will be to uh, do the para view, right, and to visualize it. Yeah. So if you see, I have I have pasted two links. One was for our uh, case setup. Right, that is there in our open for uh, uh, our FOSI website. The next step shared with the YouTube link, so you can use both of them to do the next steps. But to do the next step, you need to have this block mesh file ready. So if you have any problem, you can post in the chat. Our team is there; they will help you. Sir, yes, I uh, followed the instructions given in uh, the tutorial. In that, yes. they have uh, told the, to open the P file, in the uh, gedit. So I'm not getting what command we have to put to open that P file. Yeah, uh, yeah. Can you please repeat? I couldn't hear you. Uh, <clears throat> in the tutorial, they have said yeah. to open the P file in the text editor. Yes. So what command will have to put? So to open the P file, how do you open? Like uh, usually we use G edit. Correct. Uh, After that, and and where is your P file? Uh, so P file, I'm confused. What is it? It is the P is the pressure pressure. pressure. These are boundary condition files, right? P file, yes. U file, all these are boundary condition files. They are in your yes. zero folder. I will demonstrate that. You can wait for a while. Okay, sir. Okay, I will demonstrate that. Just hold on. I was just waiting for people to you know come to place so that because if you miss, so I, I will share my screen and then we can start that. Just give me a moment. Now, if you go through the video, in the video, they will be talking about, uh, you know, what is the exact case setup. Uh, so we are solving it for an RE of 250. So we have talked about what is the uh, problem setup, what is the length, what is the inlet velocity, what is the diameter now, and what are the various properties. So you can go through this so that you understand what is happening. Okay. Then 
based on the re the flow is laminar so we have also calculated what is known as the entrance length that is the length needed for the flow to develop fully so our entrance length is only 0.15 and we have given a length of 0.3 so we would expect that the profile at the outlet to be parabolic and we are using icofoam solver to solve the case and what are the various boundary conditions at inlet we are giving zero gradient this is for pressure at outlet we are giving zero pascal that means at the outlet is gauge pressure is zero okay it is discharging to ambient we are thinking like that okay at the wall it is zero gradient and for velocity at the uh, inlet velocity we have a velocity of 0.025 at the outlet it will be zero gradient and for the walls no slip boundary condition so the, this is how the case has been set up now how how will you run it i show you how to run it so now we are already in the pipe folder so everything is there here what what the tutorial is saying is how you can view the file right so you can type to open the p file you need to type <coughs> first of all if i do ls right my zero folder is it named as zero.org this was so that it does not create any problem while my meshing now my meshing is done so the next thing for me to do is to go back and rename my zero.org folder to zero folder so we are doing the opposite now so we are by this step what we are trying to do rename the zero.org folder to zero folder because this will be needed for a simulation so after i run this command if you see if i type ls my zero has been renamed to sorry zero.org has been renamed to zero that is the first step now what i should do is i should <coughs> see what are what are the contents of my p file so now important to know is i am in my pipe directory okay if you are not in your pipe directory this command also would not have worked for you so first thing would have been to go into the pipe directory but i hope that because you have run all this block mesh and paraform command you are already in your pipe directory so now i need to type the command g edit space okay before that i will so that it is much easier i will go to my zero folder i will do cd space zero or let me try pre right pre command will also work right uh, so if i try it huh? okay i'll just see if tree works okay yeah. no let it be uh, i will do cd zero just forget about the tree that works in uh, linux so if you see command to be typed now hello press how we import hello this is the first command ha ah, so first command have you have you done the uh, block mesh everything if you have done your block mesh the first thing that you need to do is rename your zero.org folder back to zero folder because now we have to do the case setup once that is done then what you do is go into the zero folder by typing cd zero okay now if you do ls there are two files over here u file and p file these are the boundary and initial condition files that you need right so your boundary conditions and initial conditions are specified in this zero folder now if i want to open the p file i'll type g edit and then p i don't need to write uh, what you can say zero comma p because i'm already in the zero folder if you see i am already in the zero folder that's why i don't need to write that if you are not in your zero folder then you need to write zero slash p okay to show you what are the contents of zero i have done that okay or i can show it to you from your uh, this oh here yeah, i am going to home where where the exact file structure is or i will give you another shortcut so in the pipe directory i will just type explorer i think yesterday i had shown you this explorer.exe and space and then dot so it opens the current working uh, working directory in your file file browser so this is your file browser so it is showing what are the contents of sorry it is showing me the contents of the pipe folder so in my pipe folder i have folder named zero constant and system in zero i have uh, i have files named p and u 
these are my ahl and boundary conditions files we will be opening them one by one so the, if you can open it from this or i am showing you how to open so now i have come back to my pipe type directory so if i have to open then my command will be g edit space 0 in 0 folder i need to open p so 0 power slash p when i run this the p file will open so if you see this is the p file but this p file is for the previous case because we have copied the if you remember we have copied the cavity case so it will have all the uh, what you can say boundary conditions needed for the cavity case so we need to change this okay i can manually change it but for ease so that we can do it quickly we have already provided you with the setup file so go to the spoken tutorial over here so this is your simulating hagen poise so so if you can go down there is code file so there is a code file for pressure dot text right dot txt file for pressure so if you click on that it will open the p file the p file is getting downloaded i'll open where it is in my folder i'll right click and extract it okay inside this if you see if i open it i have the p file u file so i have the pressure velocity and control dict file now i need the contents of the pressure file so i'm opening the pressure in the text editor so if you see all the way from internal field everything has been written out and given to you so copy that okay and then after copying you have to go to your text editor which was already there so i have copied everything from internal field so i have to delete everything from internal field please don't delete the dimensions if you delete the dimensions then it will give you problem so right from okay i think i am going little fast some some of you are suggesting that i go slow so i'll just hold on i'll i'll repeat this whatever i have done so that you understand so we have now opened our you uh, if you see i have now opened my p file uh, with a gedit text editor that is this all the initial and boundary conditions are there are that of the previous case and the previous case was the cavity case that we copied so i need to change all of this so i can manually change it but we have already written it out for you and that is available in your code files section so you go to the spoken tutorial link that we have given to you scroll down and click on the code files so if you click on the code files the code files will be downloaded in the downloads folder now when you open the downloads folder you have to extract it once you extract it three files are there in that pressure velocity and control i hope everybody has done till here now open Dance open sir. the yeah now open the pressure file now in the pressure file if you see we have contents all the way from internal field till the end so copy the whole thing by pressing control a control c now if you go to your g edit text editor what i said is here my contents are starting from internal field so i need to replace it from internal field please do not replace the dimension if you do that it will create an error so right from my internal fields i will select everything i will delete it and now i will paste the new content so if you see now what we have have is we have the boundary condition for the inlet as zero gradient boundary condition for the outlet as fixed value zero and boundary condition for the wall as zero gradient so our p file is now ready after this remember save it save the p file so your p file has been updated close it now i i am going to my uh, terminal again after finishing my p file i need to edit my u file so i'll type the same command but with g edit 0 slash u that means i need to open the u file which is available in my zero folder once i do that it will open the u file like you see in this case we have again the old initial and boundary conditions i will go to the downloads folder again 
Yes. So again, we have given you one more uh, file, right? That is the velocity file. If you open that, these are the boundary conditions for velocity. Again, copy it. Copy the whole thing. Now, if, if you compare with the velocity file, everything from boundary field has been given. That means dimensions and internal field, you don't need to change. So leave the dimensions and internal field intact. Delete everything from boundary field. I'll, I'll wait over here. Wait for a moment so that everybody is up to pace. One question, I, sir. Yes. Uh, do we have to give boundary condition for pressure and velocity at all the boundaries? Yes, you need to give boundary condition at all the boundaries. Like for both pressure and velocity also, like generally we give for yeah. one only. Yes, no, no. see, uh, so in open form, you have to give boundary conditions to all, right? Okay. I think in ANSYS or everything, it gets automatically taken. Okay, okay. Okay, it may be, it may be internally doing it, but open in open form, we have to specifically specify. Okay. Okay. So now this copied content we need to paste over here. So as I said, in the in our U file, we have everything from boundary. So you have to delete all the contents from boundary. Please don't delete the internal field and dimensions. So I'll delete that, paste the new content, and I will save it. Once I do that, I can close the U file as well. Okay, let me minimize this. I am going back to my terminal. So we have finished uh, changing the P file as well as the U file. Now what we need to do? As I'll, uh, I have that structure over here. See inside, now we have finished all the contents of our zero folder, okay? In pipe, there was zero folder. All the contents of our zero folder we have edited. We have edited the P file as well as the U file. Now we'll go to a constant folder. In a constant folder, this poly mesh is there because we have meshed. So it will it will have all the mesh details. So this we don't need to worry about. We need to edit the transport properties. That is, we need to specify what is the viscosity. So to edit that, I can open it here, but I will show you how to open it from the terminal. Now my transport properties is in the constant folder. So to open that, the command will be gedit space constant forward slash and then transport properties. So again, a trick over here for people who are who are not uh, uh, who are very new to Linux is that once I start to type the command, I can press tab and it auto fills. And this, by this, I know that I am doing the correct thing. If it is not auto filling, that means I might have not entered something correctly, or I might be in the wrong location. And then I'll try transport. So I start, and if I just press tab, it auto completes it for me. Okay. Now if I press enter, it will open the transport properties file. So here our viscosity is specified. Now for our case, the viscosity that is given is 1e minus 6. So we need to change this to 1e minus 6. So I'm deleting it. So my viscosity that is NU value, I'm, I'm changing it and it has to be 1e minus 6. Once I do that, I will save this. So remember, you have to change the viscosity. If you forget, then the results may be slightly different because it will be for the viscosity that was there previously. So has everybody done this? Open the viscosity file and change the viscosity from 0 0.01 to 1e minus 6. I'll, I'll repeat this again. I'll close this. So to open it, you have to type the command gedit space constant forward slash transport properties and then enter. It opens the uh, transport properties file in your gedit text editor. There in your NU, you would have had the value 0 0.01. Delete that value 0 0.01 and replace it with 1e minus 6. That means you are changing the property. Once you do that, save. Yes. Uh, sir, I am not able to open the transport properties to gedit okay. command. Uh, so what is uh, what are you typing? Are you typing gedit space constant? Yes, sir. So where are you? In which directory are you currently in? In zero. Uh, okay, correct. So now you are in zero folder. Yes. Okay. So you you are trying to search in zero folder for a folder named constant. Okay. So, so you understood what is the problem? Okay, so I have to get out of 
zero. Uh, so to come out of zero, you, so I will go to zero. Okay, now you are in zero folder. So in zero folder only P and U file are there. To come out, yes. you need to press the command cd space dot dot. That means it will come come down or come up one directory, whatever it is. It, when you do that, it moves out of zero and comes to pipe. Okay, now if I do ls, I in pipe I have zero constant and system folders. Now that yes. command g edit this command will work for you now. G edit constant slash transport properties. Yes, so sir. while you are while you all are doing this for the people who are new, also try to understand what those commands mean. You know when I'm when I'm saying that, so that you you will be able to understand why it is not working. I know initially yes. it is very diff difficult what is happening what is the CD zero, but when we are saying try to also understand it is just uh, navigating. You are just going from one folder to the other. Once you get used to this, you will say, "Ah, this is much better." The terminal. So it only takes some initial, uh, what you can say, initially some resistance is there for us to, you know, it feels so difficult. Then it becomes very easy. So once you do that, you edit the transport properties, change the NU value from 0 0.01 to 1e minus 6. I'll again open that over here. You might have had 0 0.01. Change it to 1e minus 6. Now, once you do that, save it and close it. 1e minus 6 and save it and then close it. So now we have edited the NU file as well. So now if I go back, what is the next file? The next file in my P file, in my sorry, my pipe file is system. Now in system, there is block mesh dict, control dict, FV schemes, and FV solution. So FV schemes and FV solution, we don't need to change. Whatever the schemes and solution methodology are there, they will work for this simulation. So we are not going to change them. Block mesh dict we have already edited in our first tutorial. So now what we need to change is our control dict. So to do that, I can do, see if I do ls, I have zero constant in system. Now my uh, control dict is in the, control dict is in which folder? It is in system folder. So I will I will type g edit space system slash control dict. So if you see, I am not typing the whole thing. I'm just uh, starting. I'm pressing tab. So it auto completes in system. I need to open control dict. So everybody open that. So this is it. So this we need to change. So now in control dict, to change that, we have already downloaded those files, right? So if you go to go over there, there is a control file as well. So you open the control file, copy all the contents. This is there. This is the file that you have downloaded. In your downloads, there will be one pressure file, one velocity file, and one control file. So pressure and velocity we have already done. Now do the control file. Copy everything. Copy all the contents of the control file. Now. Let's go back to our. Okay, so now I need to uh, delete the contents, this contents. So, right so in my file over here, in my text file, I'll just tile it side by side. So, this is one, and control it over here is one. So, I have everything from application. So, I need to delete everything from application. So, from application, that is line 17 for me, all the way up to runtime modifiable. This comment also uh, because I'll copied everything, so I'll delete the whole thing. Okay. After deleting the whole thing, I need to copy this and paste it over here and save it. I don't need this anymore. After I save it, I'm closing it. So right now, what we, what I have done is I have replaced the contents with the uh, I have replaced the contents of the control dict file. So I will again show you what I did. Sorry. So in this control dict, I have edited, uh, I have copied whatever the previous contents and saved it over here. Just to give you a quick uh, overview. We will be using the application icofoam. We will start at zero time, end at five seconds. The delta t that we are using is 1e minus 2. 
that is the time step that we are using is that and the rest of the things are when we are going to write it we are going to write it after every 100 time steps this write control means we are going to write it at time steps and every 100 time step purge write to when we do this it will save only the last two files because when we are running the simulation if you see what we did yesterday this purge write we had not included so it was saving all those files now in the simulation if you don't need so many files if you are only interested in your if your main interest is only in at the steady state solution you don't need the uh, how the flow profile is developing so that time you don't need to save so many data files and you know waste that much of space so that time you can give something called as purge right so it will only save the last two files and then rest is whatever is the right format so this is the contents of our uh, control deck so i hope everybody has copied this now once you do that you are now ready to run the simulation so remember we have already done block mesh so we don't need to do block mesh again we can just do icoform to run the command that means we have finished meshing now we are just running the case to run the case we will type the command icoform remember ico and f is capital over here if you see everywhere whenever we are moving from one whenever we are moving from one uh, name to the other the first letter of that uh, next word is always capital so that helps us to identify so this is the nomenclature that is used so type icoform and press enter okay ha huh, okay now i think i need to mesh it again what i'll do is i'll clear this now the command that you can uh, do to clear it is foam clean case so this command we have not taught you but you can run this command foam clean and case so as i have said first letter is always small the next letter of each word is capital so foam clean case when i run that it cleans the case now i need to run, run block mesh again so i am running block mesh okay then i am running the command ico foam that is i have meshed it and then i am running the ico foam command as well so it is solving it will take some time it will take some uh, one to two minutes for us to run i hope in the meantime you can take a short break when it is running for those who are having any problem you can uh, you can ask us in the chat we will help you so one question uh, because we are purging the files uh, does it get saved uh, for post processing like uh, the figures and all yeah when you are purging you saw the purge write was two i think so yeah. only the last two files get saved so you have to use purge write only if you don't want to save all those all this data right sometimes you are only interested in the final simulation the steady state result and that is what you are going to present to somebody that is what you are going to use for analysis then you don't need to save that so that time you can give some purge right and maybe save only two or three files last but if your interest is in studying what is the transient behavior like how my flow is developing how my heat transfer is happening and you want to see the transient behavior then you need to save those files at a particular instance so that those files are available for post processing and okay. that is the choice that you have to make depending upon uh, you know what is the time scale of your problem what is the time scale that you want to be resolved you know like you want data after every 0.1 second or you want data after every 0.01 second so all those things that will depend upon that will change from problem to problem okay so now this is done once the simulation is done yeah so the spoken tutorials are designed so that you know you can uh, rewind them go back so i think all this whatever i am do doing or i am demonstrating is from the spoken tutorials itself so with with whatever idea that you have now little bit if you go to spoken tutorial and do it one by one it will be it will be very helpful to you that is why the spoken tutorials are designed yes uh, is there any criteria to define the end time okay yeah so generally uh, say in heat transfer problem you have to identify what is the time scale right how much time your uh, uh, how much time will it take for steady state in flow one way to do that will be to understand uh, how much like we have given an inlet velocity and we have given a length 
so how long will the uh, how long will it take to um, what you can say for the flow to reach the end say it it takes uh, l by what is your speed speed is distance upon time so time will be distance upon speed so if you do l by the length of your domain divided by the velocity that you are imposing you get an idea of the time scale at right? how much time it takes now after that what you can do is um, give uh, give at least one or two multiples of that so that by that time the flow is developed so the bare minimum will be one one uh, one times uh, what you can say that time scale that i have told you one but that is that is not ideal you have to give at least two to three times that value so that you get uh, so that you get some good results and also i think in the in the later on tutorials we will teach you that right we will teach you things like how to monitor uh, the transient behavior we are also coming up with certain uh, uh, certain tutorials i think uh, i think it's on day 3 or day 4 wherein you will have to monitor certain parameters with time so as soon as those parameters say like uh, in this case the average velocity if the average velocity is constant over time that means you have reached a steady state solution so that is one way of doing that so we don't have to guess we will we will calculate the average velocity and that will happen but uh, that we will show you in day 3 or day 4 don't worry you will learn a lot of things yeah i hope uh, everybody has done this simulation hello <coughs> yes uh, sir can you explain once again to change 0 to 0 or reg file yes. what is the purpose for that okay so uh, see what happens sir. is uh okay uh, no demonstration just explain what is the purpose of uh, okay. to uh, zero okay. to zero file okay so what i am trying to say is when you uh, your file structure right i open some file structure so your general file structure for say your same pipe my general file structure will be there will be a zero folder constant folder and system folder these four and five have been generated during run time so these are result files so don't worry about them now so initially you have a zero folder constant and system when you start off right when you start off any simulation first thing that you will do is mesh okay and only if your mesh is absolutely correct you are getting everything correct then you will go into setting up boundary conditions defining them the patch and everything so when you are doing that you are not interested in the zero folder right but you will say sir if it is there what what is the problem let it be there right but when you when you do the mesh and you want to visualize the mesh using paraform the para view by default it opens the zero folder to check you know what are the values and it it loads those values and now what it will see is in zero folder you have defined say one patch called as moving wall which was there in cavity but that moving wall is not there in your block mesh because you have already changed and you have not changed the zero folder and you haven't changed that zero folder because right now you are not interested in that you are only interested in the mesh at the moment so for to avoid uh, para view using that zero folder hmm, what we do is we rename zero to zero dot oric so para view does not see the zero folder and it will show you only the mesh and that error is removed now once you have your mesh completely ready everything is done that means your inlet patch wall everything is coming properly you are ready now you have to go to simulation now you have to specify the boundary conditions so the next step will be this 0.oric folder which we had renamed you rename it back to 0 so that that gets used in the simulation so you op- you rename the 0 to 0 0.oric to 0 and then provide the appropriate boundary conditions for every patch because if you miss if if you wouldn't have done that previously then paraform would would not have worked block mesh works without any problem it meshes because it does not need the zero folder but para view during visualization it automatically checks for the zero fold so that is the issue i hope uh, i was able to answer your query uh, yes sir uh, thank you uh, sir i have a question in that the same one that you are telling in place of zero you are putting that zero dog oric in place of yes. zero dog oric i will put any other names because that will not also the give the 
Yes. Because it is searching zero. Correct, correct. correct. That is that is just names. a yes. That is just a that is just a convention that it is being followed throughout in open form, right? That is just a convention. Dot org means something like it's the original file. This zero dot org okay. naming nomenclature. See, like uh, uh, when you are when you are coding, right? People will say use the keyword flag. When flag becomes one. Or when flag becomes zero, it will specify something. I don't know if you have done some coding, you you will know that, right? There are when yes. you want to, there is a flag word. Now instead of flag, you can use anything, right? You can use j, yeah. j equal to one or j not equal to one. But so that everybody else, like if you give this case file to somebody else, they will also know the nomenclature. So st some standard nomenclature that we follow is we rename the folder to dot org. So that is just a nomenclature. It will it will work whatever you want to okay. name it. Okay. Okay, so I hope uh, everybody has done this. What I'll do is I'll share the uh, tutorial files for the next case, so that you will be able to do the post processing. I have shared the uh, new spoken tutorial that you have to follow. This is for basic post processing. Now you are ready. Everything is there. You can watch this video and try for yourself. Okay, I think it will be better that you do this session with the video, and I will demonstrate after maybe fifteen twenty minutes. Because you can, you know, go back. You can re-look at that video and do that multiple times. Because there are a lot of, you know, uh, clicks that you need to do, apply this and that. So a video will be very helpful in this case rather than live demonstration. So you do go through that video. We'll hold on for like 10-15 minutes so that you, you all are doing it. And if you have any problem, we will be here to help you. Maybe after that, I will, I will demonstrate it once. Maybe it will take five minutes for me to demonstrate that. Okay. So y'all, please go ahead and do that. Uh, I will share the YouTube link as well. I have shared the uh, what you can say the tutorial, the next tutorial that you have to follow, the spoken tutorial as well as the YouTube video. Whichever works for you, you follow that. Yes, yes, Nikita, please, please go ahead. Uh, sir, mb zero point zero zero dot org. Mere, uh, it's not working in my laptop. It should work. You you have to be in the right folder. Can you just check? Maybe you log in. Uh, Viraj, can you? Uh, you just share the uh, share the screenshot, or you know, uh, because you might be in the wrong folder. See, when okay, you have sir. to do the when you have to when, that command will work only. Like say, if I do ls, right? I have zero folder, right? So for for doing that command, okay. I'm sorry, I'm not sharing my screen. I share my screen. So right now I am in my uh, pipe folder. So in the pipe folder there is zero constant and system. So that mv command, right? Mv zero sorry zero to zero dot o ring will work now. Okay. See because it sees that there is a zero folder in in my thing. Now if I do ls, you see that zero has been renamed to zero dot o ring. So this command will work only if you are in the right directory. Now, I I will change the directory. Say I go into say constant directory. Now I am in constant. If you see my location is I am in run, pipe and constant. Can you see this? Yes, sir. Uh, so now if I run that command, okay, zero dot org, it will give me error saying that no such file or directory. Because okay, sir. In, con in constant there is no zero folder. So you are trying to change zero folder to zero dot org in constant. So you have to make sure that you are in the current directory. If you are in run directory, you have to go to pipe. And to, okay. move, to move between directories, you need to use the cd command. Okay, cd is change directory. If I have to go out of this constant, I will press dot dot. So see, from constant, I have come down to pipe. If I okay. do cd space dot dot, I have come down to run. Now, if you are in the run directory and if you are trying to run this command, then also it will give you an error. So you need to be in your case file that is in the pipe directory. So from run to go to pipe, you have to do cd space and then pipe. And now you can run that command again. So now I will rename it, rename it back because I don't want that to be a problem. Not oring zero. And now if you see it, it worked for me. My zero is again renamed to. And sir, so if I am using the zero or a zero, then. Anything, anything, right? The what this command okay. means? This command only means that you have to rename zero dot oric folder to zero or zero to zero dot oric folder. But for that, your zero folder should be in the directory in which you are there right now. Oh, okay. 
okay it should be immediately in the directory that you are inside now it cannot be that you are it is in some other folder and then some other folder if that is the case then you have to give the full path of that okay sir. like i will i will demonstrate so i am in cd dot dot i am in run now my zero folder is in pipe so if i have to run this mv command i cannot write zero to zero dot org see again it will give an error because it is saying no such directory but instead of that if i do mv space uh, what is what is that ha uh, pipe slash 0 to okay 0 to 0 dot org i hope it works or i need to have pipe here also just let me check once ah okay i see that is a mistake so in this while specifying i need to specify the path for the destination also i need to write pipe slash so what i am saying i am not in the pipe folder so rename the uh, zero folder in pipe to 0 0.4 uh, oric folder and save it in pipe itself so this command will work okay pipe ah uh, because i have already renamed it okay i think best is to go to that specific uh, file where is that uh, cd pipe and then and then run that command Yes. So, okay, I okay. I think what happened is when I did MV, it just removed that folder. You, you follow that. Just follow that. Go to that. I will. Re, I will resolve this. Make sure you are in the correct directory. So now uh, the others. Uh, the others just give me one moment. I, I want to demonstrate something wherein people are still having a problem. I'm doing it over here the Windows way, renaming it to zero. This also works. Now, uh, okay. Now, for some of you, the problem is that. For you, the Paraview is installed natively on uh, on Windows, right? Because you are having some some problem. So after your simulation is done, you need to type touch t o u c h touch space maybe result. This is a file name that you are giving result dot foam anything you can give any name, and then press enter. So what happens? A touch uh, result dot foam file gets created. So if you want to view that, just see ls. You see there is a result dot foam file that is created. Now, if you have to open this, what you need to do is uh, first do explorer dot exe and space and then dot. What does what this does is it opens the current directory in your in your file browser. That is this. So it opens this. If you see, there is a result dot foam file that is created. Now you have to open this with Paraview. So for doing that, you have to right uh, cl uh, right click on that and then select open with. And then search for the application by doing choose an application on your PC. This you have to do only once. Once you associate dot form file with uh, Paraview, then it will not uh, then it will not give you an error. For me, it will not work now because I have not installed Paraview natively on Windows because my Paraview is working. But this, these are the steps that you need to do. So please do this and do the post processing. Okay, sir. Excuse me, sir. Sir. Yes, uh, sir. How to install Paraview using Linux command? Is it uh, means a sudo apt uh, install Paraview or? Something? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Prabhu, when you install Open uh, Open Form, right? The the way that we have told you, then Paraview will get, will get installed with it directly. It will be bundled along with uh, Open Form. Paraview will also be installed. If that Paraview is not working for you, then we have told that you need to download and install it separately. But if you have some problem, you can write in the chat. Somebody will uh, will assist you. We were hoping that till now every all the problems will be resolved. Like everybody, nobody has any installation problem. But if you still have a problem, uh, write in the chat. We have a team. Somebody will guide you with the problem installation problem. Okay, sir. When uh, downloading version nine, that Paraview is uh, within that only. 
Yes, it but, gets uh, downloaded automatically. Even for version seven, it is not like that. Any open form version, if you download, Paraview gets downloaded with that. Okay, when I am typing that Paraview, it's not opening. I mean, there is some error occurring there. Yeah, so please uh, write in the chat, and uh, maybe one of our TAs they will they will give you a meeting link, and you can share your screen and show your problem to them. It may be okay. some small problem. We'll rectify that. Okay. Okay. Sir. Okay. Hello. Yeah, uh, so sir, I am uh, getting a fatal error uh, in which it is saying I cannot find a patch field entry for inlet. Did your simulation work? Uh, simulation is not running. Ah, simulation is not running. Not running. That means you might have not. Simulation. So yeah. there were certain steps, right? You have to copy the p file, replace mm. the p file, replace the u file. Hmm, change that I have the, done. That I have done. Then, if it is saying patch field, then uh, it, it, it the clear, end of, uh, clear uh, it once. Okay. Clear, uh, run the command home clean case. Okay. Do one thing. Uh, write in the chat. Somebody will assist you. I think you might have missed something. So the best thing will be home hmm. clean case. Do block mesh and run the ICO form again. If still you are getting this problem, that means something is remain right. remaining in your replacing. Yeah. You might have missed. You might have missed something. That's why it is saying patch field entry is not found because you might have defined inlet in one right. Mm. If inlet might be there in block mesh, but in your p and u file, inlet might not be defined. So that sort of an error you might get. Okay. Oh. Ah, okay. Ah, sir, uh, I have followed the tutorial. Yes. And I have saved the images, uh, screenshots. I am yeah. struggling to find where it got yeah. saved, sir. Can you help me in that? Okay, so while saving, try saving again. Okay. So this yes, is sir. my uh, simulation right? result, right? I can go yeah. and look at the U profile, but I will not see anything because I have not created a slice. Okay, if I create mm -hmm. a slice. And I create a slice, say, on the... Uh, I'm not talking about slice, yes. sir. I'm talking about saving. Yes. So before saving, I need to maybe generate okay. some data. Okay. That's why I'm, I'm generating a data okay, okay. to save. Okay. Okay. Sir. Okay. Now, if I go to the last time step, see, I'm getting some result. If I want to save this, I will do file, save screenshot. Now, if you do that, I, once you do this, you see this dialog box, right? It shows you where you are saving it. You are saving it in home, in your open form folder, and then in the pipe folder. If you don't want to save it over there, okay. you can maybe go up and navigate. Okay, I say I want to save it over here. Or I want to save it in my pipe folder. You know, things like that. So those things are... Uh, so okay. here, from here, you have to select. So do this again, and maybe you will be able to do it. Okay. Yeah, please. Can you tell me what is the a plus? Uh, everyone, can you all tell me what is your status? Have you finished the spoken tutorial last one, wherein you have uh, analyzed the, the simulation results using para uh, para view? Has everyone been able to do that? If you can just maybe type yes in the in the chat, so that I know what is the status. Only a few yes. Okay, some people are still trying. So I'll wait for another five minutes. Then I will also demonstrate it once so that I can recap it for you. I hope now everybody has uh, uh, done this. So maybe I'll share and maybe demonstrate it once again. So our simulation is done. Now I will open the Paraform utility. Our simulation will open over here. Uh, so if you see, I can click on apply and I can get all the results. Now. In my result, if I want to color color my geometry based on the uh, what you can say the values, then I what I can do is I can look at only the internal mesh. I can look at outlet, inlet separately also. Let's see if I want to look at only the internal mesh. I am che I am checking only the internal mesh in the mesh parts. So all those things are available in your properties tab. If you scroll down, mesh parts. So I can check the whole thing, uncheck. I can select only. Uh, internal mesh, I can select only inlet, outlet to view my results at a specific location. So let's see now, I want to see the velocity. So I select the velocity. 
and this is my initial time okay my domain i have to rotate it this way so that it is in line with what was there this way yes or, or this way yeah this will be better now if i go to the last time step the flow will develop but i will not be able to see that because on my wall i am not able to see that because on my wall the condition is always what you can see velocity is zero so you will see velocity is zero throughout so how to view what is inside so to view what is inside we will add something called as a slice or a clip i can clip so this my clipping plane is yeah this i can clip along y normal and apply so what it will do it one it will do is it will clip it it let me just invert it now uh, if i invert it it see it initially had clipped the other side and i wanted to see what is there on my side so i will click on invert so it shows the velocity profile now if i uncheck this show plane then all of this whatever had come that will go now let's see how it look yes and rotate it by 90 degrees this is what i'm doing by this plus x y z so i have to get a better view so if you see the flow it is coming with certain velocity and the flow is developing as it is going inside so you see the center line velocity is increasing and the flow is getting developed so this is one way of visualizing okay uh, that is clip then you can add something called as streamlines you can add something called as glyph and that also you can do so to do that i will delete this clip okay and i will add stream tracer now the source that we are selecting is we are selecting a sphere now it will give me all the streamlines through this particular sphere for you and so if i apply that so you see i am getting only two or three uh, streamlines uh where is that this hold on i need to i can hide my sphere i am getting only a few points if i increase this to maybe say 1000 point and then apply i will get many more streamlines so this will show me how my flow is going in the domain this streamlines this is one way of visualizing the other important one is called glyph so in glyph what we'll do is we'll add vectors when i click on glyph i need to given uh, glyph type is arrow my orientation array like what should be the direction direction should be in the direction of u u velocity and scale i can scale it with u velocity that means vectors that are longer uh, vectors which having high magnitude will be longer vectors having low magnitude will be shorter and i can do that i can click on apply i will hide the pipe because with this pipe checked i am unable to see what is having happening inside so here this is the glyph that you have created and this is the pipe so you can hide the pipe by clicking on the i so you are seeing only the only the glyph so i can zoom in so this is the velocity vector so internally the velocities which are at the center are having larger magnitude so they are longer in length then uh, at the walls the velocity decreases so those vectors are smaller in length that is what we are observing see so if i rotate it maybe Yeah. If I zoom in, so we see this profile. The vectors at the center are longer; vectors at the wall are shorter. This is something that we are seeing. And this can be done by the glyph function. Now, what else is there? Yeah, we can do something called as plot over line. So for that, I will first delete the glyph. Yeah. Okay. I am doing a little slowly now, because everybody has done. So I was just maybe kind of demonstrating. so you can do plot over line if you want to visualize like uh, if you want to visualize how the velocity is varying along uh, along the radial direction so what i will do i will click on plot over line now in my radial direction is along either y or x so i can just click on y axis okay automatically if you see if i zoom in a point a line along the y axis has been taken i can just click on apply 
if i click on x axis it will be taken along x axis if i click on y axis it will be taken along y axis if i click on z axis it will pass through the center so if you see it is passing through the axis this way so currently we'll take it say along the y axis and if i click apply i am getting a profile so what it is saying that well uh, velocities at the wall are zero and at the center they are increasing so you can extract this data and you can compare it with the analytical solutions that you have in your literature in the books uh, how to extract this so you can extract this by uh, doing file and then save data so when you do that some people are asking i'll just refresh that again so it will it will say where i need to save that data so you can give the location exactly by browsing this is same as windows right you give the location where you want to save give a file name say this is my velocity profile so i will type velocity profile and then this will be saved as a csv file so csv is comma or uh, comma csv comma separated values so this this is the format that i am uh, selecting once i do that and instead of saving in the run i'll go up i'll sorry in, in the pipe i will save it in the run folder okay then it is asking for precision how many number of decimals that you can change now i am keeping it five click okay now let me go to my pipe and run so in this run if you see this velocity profile excel sheet has been created so this will have data of all the points right for various points so what does u0 u1 u2 signify u0 u1 u2 is nothing but your x y and z components because your velocity will have a x component y component and a z component if you see your x and y components will be almost zero because x and y components are in the radial direction so your flow radial flow will be close to zero you will have only axial flow in this case so that's why your velocity is only varying in the z direction if you see in for all the points so your x and y velocity will all be close to zero only your z velocity will be changing then that is your x y z component of velocity then there is a pressure hmm, for those specific points then there is something called as arc length arc length means it is uh, arc we have extracted data along the radial direction from the center point so from that point till the end what is my arc length so if it will start with zero this corresponds to my central point and if i go down if i go to the last and okay i will click something one minute okay and my last is 0.0.01 okay that is my last length 0.01 so this is in the radial direction starting from 0 to 0.01 at the wall now uh, next what we have is we have the points this is nothing but the x y and uh, z location of the point so if you see uh, your in your uh, your x and x and uh, z will not change because we have plotted along y so only y will change so y will change from something like this 0 to 0.005 okay now next you want to save this you can also save screenshots like if you want to extract that data and save screenshots instead of saving this you can save screenshots so now i am in the plot over line view so if i save the screenshot it will save screenshot of this plot over line if i want that screenshot i can save it by same method or if i want the screenshot of this that is what is the colored image i don't need this i will delete this and this i can save but okay now saving this is this is of no use because we are not seeing anything so first what we will do is delete this plot over line i will show you how to create a a clip a clip we had already seen i uh, okay i will i will uh, create a slice mm, say i create a slice along the z z normal and i click apply okay now as sir had said right let's try to create that warp so that is okay where is that option yeah wow. yeah that is warp by vector so when i click on warp by vector it is asking me to scale it so i don't want such a big 
I will scale it by a factor of 0. Point, okay, it's 0. 0.1 and I click on apply. So if you see, it has scaled those velocity. <clears throat> I could have directly scaled by u or scale um, keep a scale factor one, it will be larger. Now the coloring scheme for this is based on the u velocity. So you see, this is how your velocity profile will look. Uh, can now, you repeat this? Yeah, okay, I will repeat this. I will delete this warp, okay? So first thing that you need to do is create a slice. So slice will be this fourth option. I think first is calculator, contour, clip, and slice. You click on slice, and then I want a slice in the Z normal direction. So I will click on Z normal over here. Once I do that, this gets uh, created, and then click on apply. So if you see, I'm just seeing a 2D, 2D structure, right? With the different colors. Now this, you want to warp. So the warp function is there over here, uh, this one. Warp by vector. Okay, when you do that, that means it will warp this plane based on what is the vector magnitude. Okay, if I keep scale as one and if I do that, it will become very large based on the velocity. So we are scaling it to something like say 0 0.1. I don't want to extend it too much. Okay, I just want to visualize the change. So I'm scaling it by a factor of 0 0.1 and I'm clicking apply. So you see, it has scaled this and this is something that I can see now after Thank pressing you. apply. Now, uh, this is the, uh, what you can say, the paraboloid shape that somebody was uh, rightly guessed, right? So now if you want to see this with respect to your pipe, then I should check my pipe as well. So I'm checking my pipe. But the problem is as soon as I check my pipe, the internal structure is not visible. So to do that, what we can do is we can rectify that by reducing the opacity of my pipe. So I have clicked on pipe. And if I scroll down in the properties tab, there is something called as opacity. I can reduce that opacity to maybe say 0.2 or something like that and you see I can now start I will start to see that warp okay if I I can reduce this further depending upon what you want so this is how it looks inside the pipe so this is something also that you can do and if you want to save this view you want to adjust it the way you want and then just do file save screenshot it will save screenshot of this view and give the location file name and file type is png so if you do this uh, you will be able to so i think we have mostly covered everything plot over line war place the video is there for you to refer you can practice that the thing is paraview has lot lot more functionality that than what we can demonstrate and that uh, lot more than what we ourselves have tried so it it is all on your usage if you are using it more you will be able to learn much more functionalities than what is, what is available and there are many tutorials available online also you can you, you can you do that and explore it but we have told you what are the basic ones that are needed hmm, for you to at least be able to visualize uh, sir one question in the tutorial uh, we have calculated the value for pressure and uh, compared it with the numerical result yes can you show me how to how you did that? Okay. Okay, in the spoken tutorial, you mean? Yes, the calculated value was two yes. point and the numerical yeah. value. How to get that numerical value here in this tutorial? Okay. Uh, so uh, was that at the outlet? Can you just uh, tell me if that was at the outlet? It was at the inlet. Inlet, inlet. Okay, it was at the inlet because outlet is zero. Correct. Yes. So uh, what you can do is. Yeah, the same thing, what we had done, we had plotted over the line at the center. So what I'll do is I'll delete all this. I'll delete this slice as well. Uh, maybe increase the opacity back. Now I want to know what is the value at the inlet. I can, there, is, there are multiple ways of doing that. I can just maybe, you know, uncheck uh, internal mesh and check only the inlet patch and apply. So I get data of the inlet patch only. Right now, inlet velocity is zero. So as you can see, the velocity. Sorry, no. Is this my inlet patch? Yeah, correct. I have not yet. Okay, this coloring is special. Okay, the value is very low. It is not zero. The value is very low. The color scheme is such that I am feeling that the value is zero. Yeah. So what you can do is. You can select fee over your pressure and you get all the pressure values 
but uh, what you can also do is you can plot over the line over here okay, if i create plot over line it is generating a plot over this line okay and i can extract this data if i click apply i am getting the p value and the u value and i so, can export this data okay so the single value uh, we have used in the tutorial is the average of this whole face yeah you can do you can do an average of this face the how to do an average that is also a possibility or you can get once you extract this data in your post processing you can average it out okay okay so uh, exporting is pretty simple you can do file uh, save data and export this as csv and if you don't want the u data also with it then you can just uncheck the u value and you can only get the pressure value or you want the view value also with it so those values so you can get that value and then average it Okay, uh, you. in the in the uh, for the tutorials we will also teach you how to you know do the uh, do the averaging over here itself okay based on uh, i think volume average uh, that is what we are going to teach you actually this has a lot more functionality there is a calculator function which you can do many things you can do in build or you can extract the data and you yourself can then later on post process with whatever your python code or it depends so i think uh, hello yes if i want the circumferential uh, value of the property then how can i get it by circumference around the so circumference along the circumference i want the value of wall shear for example uh, for this instance maybe pressure if for example if i have to yeah get the circumference so, uh, around the circumference uh, it is wall not there yeah anyway. yeah i think uh, you will for, have to calculate take pressure that, right? for, like take pressure yeah. for example here yes yeah so pressure uh, along the circumference with yeah, respect so to angle can i get it to with respect to angle. angle yeah so along the circumference i just need a uh, so value of pressure along the circumference okay sir circ for circumference i can try something but i'm not sure whether exactly it will work we can try looking at it at the walls and then extract that yeah. data maybe that is yeah. one possible along the walls itself it is yes. yeah so if you if i do it at the wall mm. okay and uh, i can see only the wall data right and then if i extract this you will get all the values <laughs> for the different wall at different locations yes okay this is possible but this, uh, whatever you are saying right i need the data along from... the along certain circle for example yeah so then maybe you can clip it okay clip right? it and you then can, yeah you then. can clip or create a slice See, okay. if i create a slice uh, along say z normal and if i do that uh, but along the wall it will be uh, the wall shear for example in case of wall shear stress it won't be giving a value it will be the internal of the internal yes, thing yes correct correct yeah. correct so for so the how, no, how I, can i, I no I, what with this what i was trying to say is that this will give you the value at the circum uh, circum yeah, so it. at at one point now yes. if you need that then this uh, in this slice in the pipe i will not only uncheck the wall i will also check the internal mesh and i will apply yes right. so now if i hide yes. the pipe so i will get yes. all the internal values as well now yes, you will have to compute it you will have to compute uh, it yourself or uh, wall shear stress for example is computed and i have all the values of wall shear stress along this uh, plane for example so, but i yes. need only the circumference and that to in the order can i get it oh that we have not tried that you will have to explore because there are multiple okay. things that that you can do in this right yeah but uh, if uh, there is a possible no no yeah uh, i i got I, you want it right yeah, you so got it you right want, uh, you uh, want... i want the wall shear stress along the circumference in right order it should not be like some random order like at yeah. this place it is this because in uh, if you just extract the data it will be like in a random order right the order that uh, open form decides or paraform yes. decides for it yes so yes. i need the data in the order of the circle like 0 to 360 degree i think you will get you will get with points no with points you can identify that yes right? but it is difficult right it is for example i have a lot of data and lot for lot of conditions then i have to yes. uh, always extract for that points it is difficult if there is yeah, any yeah, method uh, you got it right yeah i understood so you yeah, it is i don't know if there is a, any easier way but from the data so you will be able to do that only thing is you will have to maybe get a uh, different lot, data yeah, a lot more yeah, uh, it a will lot be a lot of work 
Yeah, yeah that is what I'm doing now. So, but mm-hmm. if there is a possibility of having this on uh, yeah. in the circle, the, uh, yeah, for yeah, example, the, the one you, t- oh, yeah, that's. Mm. I understand then what you're we, saying. We have not, yeah. we ourselves have not come come across that now. So that does okay. not mean that there is no functionality like that. We have not okay, explored yeah. uh, that much with whatever. Yeah, we that's have what done. I wanted to know if there is a. No, and uh, can we uh, in in import this .dot .dat files .dot .dat .dot .h file files uh, mm-hmm. like the transient case files bulk of them into Paraform? Uh, Paraform. Transient file of what of? Many uh, transient files like it is also running a transient file now presently, yes, but uh, yes. .dot .dat .dot .h file .h file format. So uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, Para we should have those functionalities. Because para para view uh, can also be used to analyze data of other uh, software. It's not only uh, this. And for open form, if you want, you can just this this is data for the time instance of say five. If I just yeah. click this button, it will give me di- uh, time instance of four. So all the time series data is automatically loaded in this in para view. I just have to you know uh, press the play play button. Yeah, right I got now, it. But in the similar right. way, if I have uh, time step data, uh, several time step data in .dat .h5 format. Yeah. Can I, okay, can okay. I load it? That .dot 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 .h5 file. No, no, I have can not I tried that. It? I have okay. not tried that. That is ANSYS data, right? Yes, ANSYS. Is it ANSYS? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. No, I have not tried loading a time sequence. I understand what you mean okay. because in ANSYS, uh, it will write for every instance, and I will be able to load only one file at a time. Yes. Correct. Instead of that, you want yes. a way to for it to load all the files. Uh, yes. yes. Yeah. That even becomes difficult in Ansys itself. In tech floaters. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It is difficult so, in tech floaters. Yeah. Yeah. So yes. I have not tried this in parallel. Yeah. Okay. I have uh, same kind of problem some time back, and uh, I used to plot uh, the variable I was interested in in the uh, for the post processor. So the Ansys was calculating and. Plotting that uh, after the plotting, you can export those results. So don't you don't need to uh, load all that into the CFD post processor. Okay, ha. Huh, but that is uh, if you are doing it at that instance. If you have saved and you closed, and then later on also, does it open mm-hmm. at all no, times? No, no, no. You have to firstly specify the expression, expression or some kind of uh, variable uh, during the setting before. Up. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Uh, so that is yeah, that thing, is that possible. Sometimes... That is possible. Uh, but uh, if there is a data that is not um, thought of to be run on ParaView, then maybe it is difficult, right? Then the data yes. that we have got is of no use. Uh, for that reason, I am. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I think uh, we are getting into a discussion now. Uh, so uh, I'm sorry that uh, we have not explored that in ParaView as of now. But there may be some other tools because there are a lot of functionalities. I think it, it's only a matter of what what you can explore, like calculator function and all is there. But I don't know with that how much that will be helpful to you. So I hope now that everybody has done this session and uh, you have got some idea as to how to post process the data. We will take a break now. Yes. Okay. So thank you so much, John. I hope uh, you had a, a very uh, you know, useful and interactive session by John Pinto. Uh, you might have some doubts uh, while you try to finish the execution. So you can always write to us. We will definitely get back to you, if not now, but after the workshop, after 5 or 5.30 p.m. today, or maybe tomorrow. Whenever our group members are free, we will get back to you. Okay, thank you so much.